Thank you for choosing Woods Power Group products to assist in handling your material safely and efficiently. We've created this quick start guide to assist you in the correct setup and use of your model P1 DC2 channel lifter. This video is not a substitute for the lifter's instructions. Each operator should read and understand the entire instruction manual before using any vacuum lifter. The P1 DC2 is delivered in a heavy duty box. A highly durable ABS shipping case is also available. These containers provide protection for the lifter during transport and storage. Carefully open the box and remove all packing materials. Be sure to keep these materials for later transport and storage. Pull the tilt release lever to unlock the tilt latch and raise the lift bar to the upright position. The lifter's hang angle can be adjusted by shifting the lift spool. To do this, remove the top bolt and switch the spool to the alternate position. Reinstall the bolt and tighten securely. Attach your hoisting equipment to the lift spool and gently raise the lifter from the box. Never raise the lifter unless the lift bar is in the upright position. Otherwise, you could damage the lifter. Remove the pad covers and save them for when the lifter is stored. Connect the battery to the charger and vacuum generating system. Insert the battery included for the power loss warning buzzer by pressing the battery holder inward and sliding the tray out. Then test the alarm by pressing the test switch. Before you put the lifter into service, perform the required inspections and tests as directed in the instruction manual. Before every use, be sure to inspect all controls, gauges, and indicators for visual damage, inspect the air filters and remove any liquid or other debris found inside. The instructions explain how to correctly disassemble the filters. Test the battery for an acceptable charge before every lift. If the battery gauge reads less than 50%, charge the battery fully before using the lifter. If a battery loses its charge quickly or is unable to maintain a charge for a full work shift, replace it immediately. Make sure the sealing edges of all the vacuum pads are in good condition and free of debris. Place the lifter on the center of the material to prevent any unexpected rotation or tilting. The vacuum pads need to make full contact with the load surface. Once the lifter is correctly positioned, flip the power switch to the on position. The blue power light will remain lit while the lifter is powered up. The power switch must stay in the on position during use. Press the apply button. This starts the pump, which draws air from the pads. The B1 DC2 has two vacuum circuits with two pads on each circuit. Each circuit has its own vacuum gauge, vacuum tank, and control valve. If anything affects vacuum in one circuit, the other will continue to maintain its vacuum. Both circuits must work correctly to achieve full load capacity. After both gauges show vacuum in the green zone, the green lift light will also turn on to signal that the load can be lifted. The pump will shut off automatically to save battery life and will cycle occasionally to maintain vacuum for lifting. If the pump cycles more than once every few minutes or the green lift light turns off, support the load and stop using the lifter right away. Check the instructions for maintenance information. The vacuum gauges need to remain visible throughout the entire lift. If the vacuum level ever falls below 16 inches of mercury, Stay clear of the load and, if possible, lower it safely to the ground. Do not resume normal use of the lifter until the cause of the vacuum loss is fixed. The lifter also has a low vacuum warning buzzer that will sound whenever vacuum is below the minimum level. Make sure there is enough clearance for the load to tilt without hitting the operator or nearby objects 
and keep a firm grip on one control handle. When tilting a load, do not use the rotation lever at the same time. This can cause unexpected load movement that could harm the operator. Pull the tilt release lever to free the tilt latch. Lift up or press down on a control handle to tilt the load. The pad channel automatically latches when moved to the vertical position in order to stabilize the load. Make sure there is enough clearance for the load to rotate without hitting the operator or nearby objects and keep a firm grip on one control handle. Pull the rotation release lever to free the rotation latch. Rotation stops are available at each quarter turn. To select a position, simply let go of the rotation release lever so that the latch can re-engage. Make sure the load is fully supported and secure before releasing the lifter. To detach the lifter from the load, press the Enable and Release buttons at the same time. This will cause airflow to reverse and break the vacuum seal. The P1DC2 is designed to prevent an accidental release by requiring both buttons to be pressed at the same time. While continuing to hold the Enable and Release buttons, Carefully raise the lifter until the pads are clear of the load. When you let go of the buttons, the lifter will automatically return to standby mode to extend battery life. Once your work is complete, flip the power switch to the off position. The lifter can rest on its control handle. Make sure the lifter leans securely against an appropriate support to protect the pads from damage. For storage purposes, the lifter can rest with pads down on a clean, smooth, flat surface. Then lower the lift bar to a horizontal orientation and place a support under the lift spool. When the lifter is stable, unhook the hoisting equipment from the lift spool. To transport or store the lifter, disconnect the battery from the vacuum generating system. Charge the battery completely and then disconnect the battery from the charger. Place the pad covers back over the pads to keep them clean. Release the tilt latch and tilt the pad channel into the horizontal position. Lower the lifter into the box and unhook the hoisting equipment from the lift spool. Lower the lift bar to the horizontal position. Reuse the original packing materials to protect the lifter. Once you have closed the box, your lifter is ready to move to the next job. Be sure that you read, understand, and follow the guidance provided in the instruction manual because it includes additional information and warnings. You can download a copy of the instructions for your specific lifter from WPG.com.